So yesterday after that video, I brought this truck in and um, started taking apart the old downpipe and the crossover and cutting everything up and getting started on the new setup for this thing. Trying to get the downpipe to go inside the frame rail and under the tire or behind the tire. So we came out here and then did a couple pie cuts there and then turned it towards the firewall there. And then came down here and then I don't know how many pie cuts to get it to turn under the frame. And I left this slip connection right there because I'd like to make this serviceable uh, with a clamp if I can so it can be removable if need be. And you can see the crossover, just how close that crossover ended up being. It's very, very tight. So now we'll go under it. So now this is where it turns under the truck and then goes and ties back in. I'm going to shorten this up a little bit right here to because it's close to the cross member right there and so this is the crossover and I just cut it apart and repurposed it so I didn't have any other pipe this size so I had to use what I had and um, it doesn't fit too bad it's a uh, got good good clearance from the bottom of the converter here it's away from the lines and then the oil drain is barely below it but I don't know how well you can see it's really really tight really really tight um, I, there was right here this space right up in here I should have turned it tighter to the floorboard right there and then that would have given me more room right here but overall I think it turned out pretty good um, just rolls down goes under and then turns and then down under the truck so it took all day to do that uh, the crossover is fully welded and done um, I got to pull this top section off to that slip fit and then finish weld this and then finish weld everything under the truck. I'm probably going to have to pull the crossover back off to get it to come out in the section so I can weld it and try to get it back together. But, um, it, it's, uh, it was very tight, very challenging. Um, like I say, there was some wasted space right at the firewall that, I could have taken advantage of to make more room for the crossover, but um, I don't know. I thought I had, I thought I had room, but um, that's a, a good lesson. Just use the space you have and try to keep it as tight as you can, and then go from there. I did get the um, yank sent me there. The the converter back yesterday and I see they have PT2500 on it this time so I guess they loosened it up from the 2200 to the 2500 stall and then uh, my transmission guy still has that so uh, like I say I don't know when he'll be able to get it done so I can get this truck back together I really need to get this truck back together um, somebody, somebody said something about the 550 in one of the comments. Well, at least you still have that. Well, <laughs> I, I might as well not have that because it's just, it, it's been a very problematic truck. Um, I should have never done that deal and it has been one thing after another with that thing. It is just, just not not worked out for me um went and dropped the other day it blew a power steering hose and then it that hose just came in yesterday 
I got it fixed and it's just been it's just been one thing after another with that truck so uh, I need to get rid of it and move on so I really want my truck back I really need need this truck going again and um, uh, this afternoon I'm going to get the 6L90 for the twin turbo Caprice uh, excited about that I ordered a slip yoke for it it has a 30 six spline output shaft on it um whereas a 4l80 is 32 spline so it's a massive slip yoke and only the trucks have the slip yokes the car transmissions have a bolted flange that's uh different so the ctsv has a different bolt-on flange than the the 6l80 type with the it's flat with the three bolts that go through it so mine's a two-piece drive shaft so what I'm gonna do is just take the yoke in my old drive shaft and the measurements I've got a somewhat local guy that's done a couple drive shafts for me over the years and I'm gonna try to get in touch with him and, and make sure he can build me something and once I get it the transmission and all in the car and can get that measurement then I can go ahead and get him to build me a drive shaft and then you know I can go ahead and have the transmission in the car build a new cross member and um, not sure how long the circle D converter is going to take to get I think they said December 15th or something so which I mean right around the corner so you know maybe that'll give me time to finish this truck up and see about that um, and then I've got um, a couple other things coming through the shop and then um, get the Caprice in here get it I'm probably gonna have to remove the turbos I guess to get the transmission out and I'm not looking forward to to that that's gonna be uh, fun taking all that apart to get it everything out from under it to get the new transmission in but I think that'll really uh, put that car where it needs to be. I have a good, a good solid converter in it and a, a big heavy duty transmission. And then, you know, we can really see what that thing will do. Um, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to put the full bar in it and then get it back on E85 and just, I want it, I want Michael to get it as dialed in as we can get it and just, just drive it because like I say, it's, uh, it's, it's turning in to be a, a pretty fun car. It's just, you know, getting everything there to achieve what I want out of it. And, and Michael's been a big help with it. He's got a lot ironed out on it. And I've, and I've learned a lot on that car um, with the fuel system and all that stuff. Uh, the, the fuel system, you know, it, it, was, it was very eye-opening, you know, to see on that car because it has the the pressure sensor whereas these these trucks don't have any way to monitor the fuel pressure and like i was saying on the caprice video with the with the single 450 in tank um at about 4800 their fuel was okay but the pressure was falling off so that's very valuable information in my opinion because that could be problematic down the road with other setups so i think from now on i'm going to do instead of the 450 i'm going to do the 535s just to have that extra headroom um because i don't i do not like falling fuel pressure under boost you want at least a one-to-one -one rise and when we were on the dyno with the caprice the first time we had the stock tank in tank pump and then we had the 4303 auxiliary and at the almost a thousand wheel horsepower mark we were about 45 pounds of fuel pressure which i did not like because it should have been you know 65 or something so well no actually we were 58 base then so it should have been close to 80 over 80 pounds of fuel pressure and we were at 45 so you know I just don't like that. That doesn't give me a, a good feeling. I want 
I want the fuel pressure to make sure that the injectors are going to fire properly. And um, so I'm, I'm glad I, I redid the fuel system on this truck and that we did the, redid the fuel system on the Caprice. And I feel like that's, that turned out really well. Uh, again, it was able, we were able to turn the pressure down on it from 58 to 45. And then Michael was able to get it to idle a lot better by by doing that and i don't i don't think i explained that well in that in that video but at 58 base pressure the pulse width was so low on the injector those two tens that it it couldn't go any lower and it was rich so when we dropped the pressure from 58 to 45 then it increased the pulse width and leaned it out so then we were able to control it with airflow so that that's what cleaned it up i don't think i really explained that well on the caprice video but you know that uh, 210 is a massive injector and you know it's what i had and that's i like having a, a big injector uh, just because if you can get it to idle right and run right then you know it's not going to affect anything and you'll have plenty of a headroom later on down the road so now we've got the pressure behind it with both pumps working and then with the regulated return and all so um this truck has a, actually has a it's a 525 or 535 uh apparently the 525 has a check valve and then the 535 does not so so it is a 10 liter per hour difference with that check valve so it's not as much as i had had said in one video um, as well as I was referencing the 450 and the 525 and the 535 and I to be honest I didn't know that, that there was a 525 and the 535 but that's the difference between the 525 and the 535 is a check valve so it is a difference in flow rate because of that check valve because it is restrictive but it's not as much as I was thinking so anyway useless information but anyway i'm gonna pull this uh obs truck down uh dissect it get it back apart and then finish welding everything and then try to get it back to him as soon as i can so i can get paid on this job and um proceed to fix all my broken turbo vehicles and go get the 6l90 for the caprice so Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how it's probably not going to sound any different, but um, I guess I'll do another auto clip when I get it all finished welding and back together. But that's it for now.